Hello. Well, today I'm going to talk about a movie that I've wanted to talk about for a while, but just <laughs> for whatever reason, just kind of put it off. And I uh, you know no time better than now. And that movie is There Will Be Blood. And here's the DVD. Um... This film uh, is, is, is truly amazing. It's a fantastic film. Um, it's 15 years old, actually. And um, I'll show you this. It's pretty cool. It's like a Bible. Because, well, you know, one of the things that's huge in this film is religion. And there is a Daniel Plainview with his son, H.W., and... Eli Sunday, who has a twin brother, Paul Sunday. And, um, this is a, like a, like an excerpt of the, from the book Oil, which, uh, this film is inspired by, and, um, so, in a way, it's, uh, It is an adaptation, but only to a certain extent, and, you know, and, uh, uh, this disc set is, uh, really good. It has all the same contents as the Blu-ray, which I got later, obviously, um, but, uh, yeah, this, uh, is truly an amazing film, um, won two Academy Awards, one for Daniel Day-Lewis, for best actor and uh, cinematography, um, you know, it's about a uh, Daniel Plainview, an oil man who uh, really around the time that the big kind of like oil uh, strike of a like early tw uh, 20th century uh, uh, happens. And he's there, and he's doing what he can to, you know, uh, drill and make uh, uh, any oil that is underground at the various places, you know, buys up property and goes to get the oil from from there so that uh, he can make a profit. And, you know, he makes some promises that people will, you know, get uh, uh, you know you know they will benefit from it and yet they doesn't seem like uh, this happens obviously you know it's uh, you know there's an interview with Daniel Day Lewis where he's like you know in a way it was like a sort of like a some fraudulence with the character with that makes promises of the sort but then he doesn't exactly you know follow through and then there's Eli Eli Sunday played by Paul Dano um he he's like sort of like you know spiritual fraudulence and he's like there's no excuse for that you know it's like there's no reason to like you know he like uh, goes and says like he's a like a prophet you know he's a he's a, like a, a chosen one from God and you yet you know the way he goes on it's like he he's like able to for miracles, and then, you know, he's not able to, you know, you know, if God's working through him, you know, he's not working through him regarding, like, any kind of, uh, you know, miracles that can be done, such as when H.W. in the film, he, uh, you know, Daniel's, you know, son, adoptive son, as you see in the beginning, you know, his real father is there, but then he is accidentally killed. You know, when uh, in an accident when trying to get oil, uh, and other thing or and other things and stuff like going like with uh, just you know, we see some accidents happen. You know, and despite the you know despite the title, you know there isn't a whole lot of blood. You know, it is a fairly intense film though, but uh, not all that violent and. Um, 
you know, H.W., you know, is raised by Daniel, and he goes and parades H.W. as, in a way, of sort of like, you know, as, a, as he said, puts it later in the film, as a sweet face. That way, it makes it easier for him to make these deals. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a very fascinating film. Um, it's, uh, made by, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, who, aside from this film, is well known for, uh, Boogie Nights, um, Magnolia, The Master, and, um, yeah, he's just a very good filmmaker overall. It's also the first time since uh, he began to work with Philip Seymour Hoffman that, you know, he was not in this film. You know, he was, I can believe, uh, I forget exactly which film I want to say, Boogie Nights, but, it, uh, but then part of me wants to say Hard Eight, but I don't think that is correct at all. I think Boogie Nights was the first film uh, that Philip Seymour Hoffman worked with Philip, uh, with Paul Thomas Anderson on, and then he, uh, then, you know, worked, uh, with him on Magnolia, and then Punch Drunk Love, and then this film, he was absent, he did not work with, uh, him, um, then again, you know, I guess when you look at the film, it, it's like, well, well, who would Philip Seymour Hoffman have played, and, um, I guess there could be, there could have been somebody like, you know, maybe like a Tilford or somebody of the sort who Daniel talks to and sort of butts heads with. I could see him perhaps um, play a character like that, per, uh, say, and that could have been interesting to see the two of them kind of just uh, talk, but, you know, yeah, without Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, you know, this film is an excellent film. Uh, it's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, you know, 15 years ago, this film came out in 2007 was one of those years that was, uh, truly great. It was, it was had a lot of, uh, excellent films. Zodiac, as I already talked about earlier this year, which I love this film, obviously, um, uh, the Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford, um, which, you know, is an excellent film, but it doesn't have as much, you know, it doesn't have as much of a, a notoriety, uh, like There Will Be Blood or, you know, uh, No Country for Old Men, which came out the same year, um, or Michael Clayton, which is also an excellent film, and so many other films that are great that came out in 2007. Um, you know, it's just amazing just to look at the films from that year and just look back and, man, there were so many that were just fantastic. It's almost like one after the other. And, you know, I, I've been recently kind of going back on certain films that are, uh, you know, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and um, I know I've talked about certain films that came out 10 years ago also, um, but it's just also interesting to look back at uh, just 15 years ago and some of the films that came out, such as this, and I realized I really wanted to rewatch this and talk about it because it is an excellent film. It's a film that deserves... You know, a lot of discussion there are people talking about it a lot you know or have been you know on the online so uh, I guess if anything the when I first saw it years ago um, I didn't see what when I came out in theaters you know I was 13 but I saw it some years later I really enjoyed it you know I thought it was excellent I think it's better than uh, no country for old men it's just me. Um, it's just the writing and acting is uh, fantastic. Um, Sweeney Todd is also another film that came out 15 years ago. Johnny Depp, that was excellent. Um, I kind of wish Johnny Depp won the Academy Award, um, but 
you know, Daniel Day-Lewis was truly excellent. Um, I can definitely see why he won his Academy Award. Um, though, of course, with Johnny Depp, he's like, I, you know, he probably should have been nominated a uh, few more times before First Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, uh, which he was his first nomination. And, um, of course, I've, I'm pretty sure I've <laughs> discussed, uh, yeah, I did discuss Black Mass, and I definitely think he should have been nominated and won for that film, but, you know. You know, this film really uh, just showed how really amazing Daniel Lee Lewis was, you know, as an actor. I mean, he's still around, obviously, but, you know, he's retired. Um, and he truly did a, an amazing job, excellent job, as Daniel Plainview. The voice and the, just the look he has is really fascinating and just... He uh, talks a bit like this, and uh, sort of uh, was sort of worried, you know, but also relieved that there really wasn't any kind of recordings of people of that time to say, like, you know, you did it wrong. You shouldn't have sounded like that. Yeah, you know, he, he was sort of relieved by that, but you know, he, he's great at accents and voices. Like Gary Oldman is, you know, and Christian Bale. <clears throat> you know, there's just certain people who are just excellent at changing their voices or accents or, you know, whatever that you want to say. Has such a unique voice. And I think that's just what, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why this film is truly notable. But I think that voice is like, it's just this, once you hear it, it's like you can't not hear it. It's just there forever. And... Such a unique voice. It works for the character. Just truly amazing. And I uh, love rewatching this. I know I'm kind of going a bit all over the place, but when it's a mo when a movie like this has been talked about so much, it's like, what really can you say about this? Uh, it hasn't been said, and there really is pretty much nothing beyond when I first saw it. I was just amazed and was wowed. Um, Truly amazing. It's just a, a true epic. You know, on the back of the box, it says, uh, you know, this, is a, this is an epic film, and it is definitely correct. This is like a, a you know, modern uh, epic, and it deserves the praise it has gotten. And I love rewatching this. It is an excellent movie from beginning to end, and it's always always an experience um it's just it's just has it's, there's an atmosphere about it and, uh, and paul thomas anderson is an incredible filmmaker um and also just how the whole thing with religion is you know into it but you know you know eli is not very is it's very deceptive and so is daniel they both see that in each other and so in a way they're both being very deceptive um, and I do like what Daniel Lee Lewis says, like how it's, you know, there is no excuse for, you know, spiritual fraudulence, you know, with, 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 with the fraudulence that, you know, Daniel Plainview, uh, we we see you like, might, might exhibit and, uh, give out throughout the film, you know, it's like, well, he wants money, not necessarily the greatest excuse, but, you know, he wants money. He wants to own a lot of things and to produce more money and just be able to be fairly, like, uh, just comfortable and uh, overall just in charge of things. We see that throughout the film. He wants to be in charge, and when he can't be in charge, when things are out of his control, you know, he, he does not like that. So he likes to be in charge. He likes to have ownership of things, and he likes to... You know, uh, just produce a profit here and there. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, you know the way he goes about it and 
promises people things it's which we know won't happen you know if it produce like oil is brought up you know people aren't really going to benefit from it you know unless they directly work for him um it's likely you're not exactly going to really see much of anything um yeah, but yeah, but but Eli, yeah, there's no excuse for for spiritual fraudulence. It's like you know that's a guaranteed way to hell, despite the fact that he's like he's trying to save people. Well, there's a way to save people, and then there's what Eli's doing, and that's just not very good. Um, and not to say that Daniel Plainview was a all around good person with that one little flaw. Uh, he does do some terrible things some things you might be able to understand and possibly justify to some extent but then other things it's just like yeah he goes a bit overboard at times um again we can see and understand his motives at these instances but still it doesn't really completely excuse what he does it's just kind of a way to explain why he made certain decisions or did what he did um with all that said um i believe i've really kind of summarized my overall thoughts um i do wish though at the award circuit that um paul thomas anderson won best adapted screenplay and uh, Paul Dano being acknowledged as supporting actor. Um, not necessarily uh, going to say that he would have won if nominated, but, you know, he should have been nominated. Just like, you know, Robert Downey Jr. should have been nominated for Zodiac. Paul Dano should have been nominated for this film. Um, that's just one of those decisions where it's like, you know, the Academy sort of dropped, dropped the ball. But then again, when you look at the acting categories... Of that year for the various award shows it's like well some of them will be difficult to not acknowledge and then some i guess you could be like excuse like you could just get one or two out of like the supporting category and then insert robert downey jr and paul dano um <clears throat> but yeah that's really all I have uh, to say right now. Um, I hope all of you having a good week, or have had a good week. Hope you all ha have a good day. Hope you'll have a great weekend. And happy brand new month. Uh, it's November. And I hope all of you will have a great day, great weekend, and a great month. See you all next time. Bye.